The Legend of Zelda is a game series that's known for its longer development times. Of course, that's not a bad thing. Far from it. But sometimes developers want to challenge themselves, make something completely different from what had come before it. And so, Majora's Mask was made. Majora's Mask is by far my favorite Zelda game. While it largely used a lot of the same assets as Ocarina of Time, the game is a much more difficult and interesting adventure to me. The side quests filling out most of the game's playtime meant they had to be really engaging. And boy were they. Of course, if you're here from the Ocarina video, you know why we're here. We're going to talk about the artwork in this game, which you don't really need me to tell you is incredible, <laughs> but I'm gonna anyway. Like I said last time, this is a way for me to talk about the artists involved with these projects who can kind of go unknown to the general audience. Which is fine, like, you don't have to know who every person who works on a game is, but as an artist who is incredibly interested, interested in video games myself, these people inspire me so much. I can't help but want to study their work because I know I'll find some valuable knowledge that I can put to use in my own artwork. And just the same as last time, there's artwork to accompany the video at the end that I did to celebrate this wonderful game. I'll add a timestamp here and in the description if you want to skip to the artwork, but for those of you who want to take a dive with me and learn a little bit about these artists, take out your lens of truth and let's get to it. Like last time, we'll be talking about Yusuke Nakano and his involvement with the game, because I think at the time in Nintendo, he was just so influential and just incredibly talented. But before we do, I want to talk about the art director for the game, Takaya Imamura. Imamura joined the Zelda series to work on A Link to the Past as a boss designer. It wasn't just the art, I also designed the mechanics with one of the programmers, he said. He ended up working on all of the bosses beside Ganon and one other, so it's safe to say he had a pretty important job. I love that he didn't just do the artwork, like he got to design how they would attack and move to try and defeat the player. Each one felt really distinct, and that's saying so much about what he was able to do with his artwork. When Majora's Mask rolled around, Imamura worked as the art director for the game. He's the reason the game looks like it does. When asked, he had said, We had to develop Majora's Mask in just one year, so it was a very short development window. When I saw a prototype of the game, I thought it looked too similar to Ocarina of Time, so it became my task to change the look of the game over a short period. Imamura wanted to ensure that the game had its own identity as it would be directly compared to Ocarina of Time, you know, since they used a massive portion of its assets to make Majora's. He was responsible for the name Majora, the design of the moon, and perhaps one of the greatest characters ever put to paper, Tango. That's right, he unleashed Tingle under the world and by far should be his crowning achievement. Art director for Majora's Mask? I sleep. Artist behind the totally 100% actual fairy man? I'm sold. You can do no wrong. Yusuke Nakano. Like, do I even have to say anything about him? Yeah, I mean, like, this is part of the video, of course I do. But it should be pretty apparent that I love this guy. For those who haven't seen the Ocarina of Time video, which you totally should, like, not as good, but I like it just the same. Kind of like how I feel about Ocarina compared to Majora's. Feel free to tell me how wrong I am in the comments. Yusuke Nakano was Ocarina of Time, okay? He was the sole illustrator for the game and an absolute powerhouse of an artist and he's returned once again from Majora's Mask, and a lot of other Zelda games. He's just a solid Zelda veteran, and I think any game he touches really benefits from his involvement. So why does he deserve such praise, you ask? It's pretty simple. His work speaks for itself, and the examples I show here should give you a pretty firm idea. Nakano's artwork nailed the style and atmosphere for the games he worked on. In Ocarina, it had that whimsical fantasy feel to it, while Majora's Mask was much more macabre and kind of depressing. So Nakano decided to use hard shadows to bring those feelings to the forefront. It still retained a lot of the core Ocarina's art style, but looked a lot more like how you would render a comic book page, which was a major influence to Nakano at the time. He loved Hellboy, and the harsh shadows used to render the characters and background was something he really wanted to play around with. In an interview for the book Art and Artifacts, he said, 
it was decided that Majora's Mask was going to have a dark atmosphere, so he wanted his expression to match. So we set out to depict a character that seemed rather mature for a child. We put a lot of shadows on him. Their decision to go this route directly played into the idea that the game continued over from Ocarina of Time, and in that game, Link had gone through some pretty rough experiences as, as an adult that would have carried over to him back as a child, moving on with his life. And I really think that they nailed it in the presentation of all the artwork to convey that dark and mysterious mood they were looking for. I want to briefly acknowledge the 3D remake of the game as well, since Nakano worked on illustrations for that game. Despite how you may feel about the 3D versions, the artwork is still on par with some of the best the series has to offer. Nakano's style in this illustration was much more detailed and eschewed the comic book style entirely. It was more akin to the artwork seen in Ocarina's 3D adaptation that looked more like an oil painting, removing all line work with beautiful color work and incredible composition. So you get to see the evolution of his artwork this way and how he decided to differentiate from the original to the remake. Majora's Mask is my favorite Zelda game, so I'm going to be a little biased on the artwork here, especially since I've done a lot of fan art of this game, way more than any other game in the series by far. Something about the characters, the masks, and especially the Skull Kid keep me coming back to try and perfect drawings on them. I'm always so happy to talk about this game and how weird and fun it is, and this series allows me to dive even deeper into my love for this game. If you haven't given it a try yet, I really think that you should. It's a really unique game, especially for Zelda, and some really incredible people put their time and talent in this game. Except for whoever's idea it was to force us to play the Beaver Race four times for a piddly little heart piece. Four freaking times! It's completely made up for with the Cafe and Anju quest line though. Pure bliss. Alright guys, so here we are, we're just um, running through the artwork here. Um, I decided to go for more of like a... I guess kind of a poster design for this one. We did, um, the last time I had, uh, was, it was kind of a landscape. Uh, obviously in portrait, but it was landscape. And uh, uh, it was just Link and the Kukiri crew. But this time I decided to go for um, more of a, uh, I wanted to depict all of the characters, um, the, uh, at least the main characters in the game. Um, even though one of those characters you don't get a lot of screen time with, especially the, uh, the um, Deku Scrub. Um, the Deku Scrub actually doesn't even have a, uh, an actual official design. So this is a design that I usually, I, I kind of can't, I, I've been using myself. Um, it's one that I came up with for like a comic I did a little bit ago. Um, but I've been using it ever since. It's got the three leaves on his head, like the mask, and he's also got the, um, he's got the gloves that he, that like, uh, Link wears when he's wearing the mask, and he's also got like a little, a little grass skirt. So, um, yeah, I don't understand. They just have never really the only because yeah, the only actual official artwork for that character is the um, is the like the the, the dead husk uh, of the tree um, that was left in the beginning of the game. So that's uh, I really wanted to, to make something that was kind of like just um, an homage to all the things that was that character. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll be going through like the. Uh, um, the coloring process and all that stuff. I, but before we get into that, I want to talk about a little bit about like my my own history with Majora's Mask, and because um, it's it's honestly not really a long history. Um, I, I I know I say it's like one of my favorite games, but it, it was more of a recent thing that it became uh, one of my favorite Zelda games, and um, that was because uh, I never really played it as a kid. I never oh, I never owned it. Um, I never rented it. I, I think I played it like once or twice. Um, never really got into it. Uh, the 3D mechanic kind of threw me off, as like a lot of people did. And, um, and then I got it on the virtual console with a buddy. And we played it like all through the night. Um, we even made it to like Woodfall Temple, I think. And then the next day I went, in, I like, got into Snowhead. And then I think I dropped it after that. But um, it, I, didn't, I didn't actually beat the game for the first time until... Um, it was on the 3DS, which is going to be kind of like jarring for a lot of people, I think, uh, because uh, the 3DS version is not like a lot of people's favorite version of the game. I mean, I really like it. You know, personally, I, I, I don't have any, I, th I mean, I don't have any big issues with it. I mean, I, it looks beautiful. Like, it looks great. And I, I, I love playing it and it's something I can take on the go. It's really nice. So, uh, 
that's the one I usually play anymore, but, um, I, uh, I, I never really got to, to experience it in full until the 3DS. Um, so when I did, it, um, and honestly, it, it blew me away. Like it, um, just the, the way the game's designed is so great. The, like all the characters are so charming, and even though they're all incredibly depressed. <laughs> you know, they're all kind of in denial. This catastrophe does happen at the end of the world. Um, and of course, there's uh, also you know the, the idea behind it being Link's death. Um, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, but just the character relationships in general are really, really interesting, I think. Um, but here, um, we'll go back and talk about the artwork for just a second here. Probably for longer than that. <laughs> but um, we've got, uh, I'm working on the shading here, and this I'm doing the shading a little bit different than I usually do. I, on the last one, you even saw that I did the shading differently, but uh, I'm going with the shading first before I do everything, and that's why I, I, I did like a, a white base for everything, because it's kind of, um, it shows better, you know. Um, but uh, I also the, the colors. Um, I, ch I chose like a, a warmer color for the rest of these characters, and then for um, for Mr. Mika here, the I've uh, I've done uh, more of a blue because it, it, I'm going to be using a, um, a blending mode uh, called Difference to help me blend the colors in, and it's going to blend the colors kind of together. It's not going to overlay them, or it's not going to just show the grays. It's going to overlay the colors and kind of mix them together, so we get. We get kind of a you'll you'll see you'll see in just a, a minute here how the colors kind of blend together. It's really interesting how it works. Um, it's not something that I think that I'm I'm gonna do like uh, for like like really really big and like pieces of, um, of of artwork just because like I like the way that the colors look when I kind of mix them myself. But this is kind of a really it's a quicker way to do it really, and it, it's something for like projects that I need to get done and I, I put myself on a, on a time crunch for which was this one <laughs> you know um, but um, not to say that it looks it, it that makes it look any worse or anything I think it actually looks pretty good like this like look at this I like the way that the, the shadows actually look when, when you do that but I'm just going in here and adding like some extra like reds and stuff like that to, because I think that most skin tones kind of need it I uh, need a little bit of red, but I'm keeping it kind of still kind of dark, right? I'm adding the lights in here, but I'm keeping it kind of dark in the shadows because that's more reminiscent of Majora's Mask. Um, and I also want to say I think uh, I I kind of I joked about uh, Imamura, um, but uh, I I think he's he's obviously incredible, and uh, you know I made the jokes about uh, Tingle and everything like that, and I think you know I think those are warranted, obviously, because it's Tingle, but um, you know I I, I just he he did some other really incredible things. Like he actually he did uh, artwork for um, uh, it was Star Fox, and he also did artwork for I think F Zero too. So he he's designed some characters for some really really cool games. So I'm uh, I'm really excited uh, to even just like mention him in a video because he's he's a really cool guy. Um, from what it seems like, I mean it, he he's got some like he obviously he has some really interesting ideas as far as like. How games are nowadays, as com uh, you know, compared to what how they were. Um, I also want to mention here too. Uh, you'll see like the the way that the shading ended up working. I actually, because of uh, how it's shading, the difference layers are kind of weird um, in how they work with blacks. So you have to use like a um, uh, a lighter tone or a lighter color if you want to do that. So I, what I did was I just erased all of the, the shading around the, the the darker areas, the really dark areas. Because it just it makes it look light because it's a, it kind of makes a difference between a, con like a contrast in that and in, in colors. Um, so I ended up just, just erasing all of it and just redoing the, uh, the, the darks on my own. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess um, all the characters that I've, uh, I've drawn here are um, you know we don't get a whole lot of screen time for a lot of them, but they are uh, obviously incredibly important to the story. Um, unfortunately for the Deku's Crab, it's, you don't see him very much, and you don't really get even that much information. You can talk to other people about the other characters, but there's only one character you can really talk about um, the Deku's Crab with, and that's uh, the butler, who's his father. Um, so, it, it's really interesting the way that they kind of dealt with that character, because they it was just foreshadowing from the beginning, and I, and I really, really dig that. But, uh, I guess I can talk about, too, like some of my favorite... Um, like the side quests and everything like that. I love the Lon Lon Ranch, or the, sorry, Lumani Ranch um, side quest, the, the one with the aliens. 
um, and like and the cow is just so bizarre. It's such a weird thing for like it, it just feels it's so incredibly Zelda though. Like of course Zelda would do that, right? And um, and then you know there's the uh, the cafe in Anju uh, quest line. It's the longest quest in the game, and it's also like, the best one. So um, that kind of thing. Uh, but those those are some of the best ones. Obviously, the stone mask is just awesome. It's it's funny. It's it's so so good. <laughs> I love it. Um, but uh, yeah, so I decided I'm just gonna put the put the masks as the backgrounds, and then we've got the Majora's Mask in the back for the for the one. Um, but yeah, I mean that's really all I have to say about like the artwork and everything. I mean, it, I I really had a, a fun time doing it. Uh, I, I I love Majora's Mask. I love everything about it. And, um, I like being able to share this kind of thing with you guys. I, I, I like being able to share like the, um, uh, just just the artists with you guys because I, I think they're they're really incredible and they need to be talked about more. I think I said that in the last one too, but I, I I stand by it. I think it's important to know some of the people who have worked on the games like that because everybody always talks about directors and all that stuff, but nobody really ever talks about the artists. And I just want to be one of those people, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I um. I know it's been a while since I did one of these. Um, it's uh, it has been quite a minute, um, but hopefully we'll get back. I'll get back into doing more. I want to do more of these if I can. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think the next one I want to do is like Pokemon or something like that. Pokemon is something like, like we'll talk about like some. Um, I, I want to do like Diamond and Pearl stuff. Like just just talk about Kenzuki more in general. Um, but uh, yeah, that's gonna be. We're gonna see the uh, the whole artwork here in just a couple seconds. Looks like, um, and I think it's gonna be right here. Yeah, it'll be like right here. So um, I uh, really appreciate everybody for for taking the time to, to watch this. It, it, it's uh, something that's really important to me. I, 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 just like the the art portion, you know. I mean, I, just an artist in general. I think that it's just a. It's just a really interesting part of video games, and it's obviously a very important part of video games that I, uh, I really, really enjoy. Um, but uh, there will be, uh, I, want, uh, I think what I want to do is we'll do more like, I want to do some more like just time-lapse videos, art videos, that I'll, I'll just throw up here uh, maybe once every couple weeks or so. Um, that way I have some stuff, you know, like, like that that I can, I can show on the channel. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I guess I should do the typical YouTube stuff. Like, um, if you guys enjoyed it, just uh, just consider giving it a like. I, I would, I would honestly would prefer like, um, you know, throw me throw, throw me something in the comments, you know, um, and start a conversation about it a little bit if you can. And uh, um, yeah, I hope you guys have a, a great day or you know whatever time it is for you guys. Um, you know, hope you guys are staying safe out there, and I will see you in the next video. Adios, guys. Thank you.